Welcome to A Line Through Time, where I take the time to look through your favourite franchises and work out how it all lines up. Dead or Alive, the series that saved Tecmo and created breast physics, turns 20 today. A lot of big anniversaries this year, eh? Sonic, Metroid, Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Zelda, and now DOA. But our tale does not start back in 1996, oh no. Our journey begins all the way back in October 1988 with the release of a little arcade game called Ninja Gaiden. As you've no doubt figured out if you didn't know already, Dead or Alive and Ninja Gaiden are part of a single shared universe. But years before DOA was even a twinkle in Tomonobu Itagaki's third eye, Ninja Gaiden had two near simultaneous releases. The arcade Ninja Gaiden was released in America in October 88, followed by a Japanese release as Ninja Ryukenden the following February. There was also a release on the NES under the same names, but releasing in Japan in December 88, and America in March 89. Ninja Ryukenden translates as Legend of the Ninja Dragon Sword. For the American title, which means Ninja Side Story, the localization team allegedly felt the need to shorten the name, but still keep it Japanese, so they picked a name that sounded cool. This name would be oddly prophetic of how the series would end up. As for Europe, we got the early games as Shadow Warriors because ninjas were banned over here. I guess they were concerned a ninja might try to assassinate Margaret Thatcher or something. Anyway, the arcade game follows an unnamed ninja, generally accepted to be series protagonist Ryu Hayabusa, decking fools all across America. Why they chose America, I don't know, but it's the series genesis. The NES game, which definitely featured Ryu Hayabusa, sees our hero teaming up with CIA agent Irene Liu and travelling to America to avenge his father Ken's murder at the hands of the evil Jackio. And yes, Ryu and Ken, I don't really know why. Shinku Hadouken! They changed his name later to Joe. In addition to pioneering hard as balls difficulty, Ninja Gaiden was also one of the first games to make extensive use of cutscenes to tell an elaborate plot. One half of the shared universe revolutionised storytelling and games, and the other revolutionised tits. Good combo. Generally, we can assume the NES game comes after the arcade version since that's the release order. 1990 gave us Ninja Gaiden 2 The Dark Side of Chaos, which is just a phenomenal subtitle. That may have sounded a bit facetious, but no, I'm serious, I fucking love it. The plot picks up a year after the first game, with Ryu pursuing the new villain Ashtar, only for a revived Jackio to be revealed as the true villain all along. Ryu and Irene grow closer together. Ninja Gaiden 3, The Ancient Ship of Doom, released in June 91. Strangely, this game is actually set between the previous two, which we know because Ryu sacrificed the Dragon Sword to revive Irene in the previous game, but he's still using it in this one. This detail gets contradicted way later, but that shouldn't affect the chronology of the early games. Irene is seemingly murdered here and Ryu is framed. She shows up later packing the machine gun because Irene was the best. After this, the original video animation Ninja Ryu Kenden was also released in 91. Since Ryu and Irene are expressly married here, this is the latest in the timeline. In November of the same year, a new entry released on the Game Gear titled Ninja Gaiden. Some evil mind-controlling demon is trying to start World War 3, so Ryu kills him and life goes on. Placement is tough. I could say Irene's absence could place it before NG1 since the two marry after the trilogy. But then, where is Ryu's father during the attack on the Hayabusa village at the start of the game? Another option is during the year between NG1 and 2, probably before 3, during which time Ryu and Irene aren't properly an item yet and Ryu's father is recently dead. December of 91, yes, the same year again, saw Ninja Gaiden Shadow released on the Game Boy. Shadow is alleged to take place three years before NG1. Ryu heads to New York to deal with some fools who are causing trouble. In theory, this game could be set in the same trip as the arcade game, but we can save that discussion for later. For now, we'll place it between arcade and NES. Another game named Ninja Gaiden was released the following year for the Master System, exclusively in Europe, with the Ninja Gaiden name instead of Shadow Warriors. Crazy. Once again, the village is attacked and only one guy is left alive. Presumably, since Ryu's father is absent again, it likely takes place after the first game. Given that Ryu later leaves his home to open a curio shop with Irene, this could well be the end of the Hayabusa clan as an entity, giving Ryu the freedom to do so. Let's put it between NG2 and the OVA. Following this, the series went into hibernation. Tecmo was having money troubles by 1996 and were faced with a dilemma identical to Squaresoft in the 80s. There was only enough money for one last game, so they risked it all on a new idea from fresh young talent and gave it a name that reflected the dire circumstances they faced. It was a risk that would ultimately pay off and give the company a new flagship franchise to lead them into the future. And so, under director Tomonobu Itagaki, Team Ninja created Dead or Alive.
DOA was one of the first 3D fighting games and stood out with its unique parry system and breast physics. Additionally, Ryu Hayabusa was added to the game's roster, likely to give the game an extra boost of attention. He would then stick around as one of the series' main characters. The plot itself follows a ninja from another clan, Kasumi, as she sets out to avenge her brother's defeat at the hands of their villainous uncle Raido. She enters the first Dead or Alive tournament to get her chance, while Ryu, best friend of Kasumi's brother, is asked by him to watch over her. Ryu's bio in the manual acknowledges his marriage to Irene, as well as the shop they opened, which which always struck me as odd. Like, the guy's 23 and his wife is about the same age, so the head of a ninja clan and a top CIA agent both retire at around 23 to open an antique shop. Like, really? Really? Ah, oh, whatever, on the end. When DOA proved to be a huge success, a vastly improved sequel was released in October 99, Dead or Alive 2. DOA 2 had about six versions before the end. It's mental. Kasumi's brother Hayate is introduced alongside Eleanor, the daughter of the evil corporation's now dead CEO, and Ryu kills the final boss. Sequel. Dead or Alive 3 was a launch title for the original Xbox in November 2001. This is the first entry I played and it was great. The plot focuses on Kasumi's half-sister Ayane trying to kill her brainwashed foster father. I'll come back to this later, but for now, sequel. Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, you take the piss, but at least it's not an action-adventure game like every other spin-off of a fighting game released around that time or even ever, released in 2003. Zack, the series' primary joke character, uses his winnings from a Vegas trip in DOA 3 to buy an island and invite all the DOA girls for a fake DOA 4. Even Eleanor, who is now the head of the company, and Christy, who works for the guy secretly running the company from the shadows, both fall for it. Like, how? And yes, DOAX is canon. We learn in DOA 4 that Zack ended up in a significant amount of debt after his island was destroyed by a volcano, and he ended up attacked by Mega Shark on its way to fight Giant Octopus. Yeah, this series is fucking weird. By now, Itagaki was Tecmo's golden boy, and he was given the opportunity to revive Ninja Gaiden, seeing how Ryu was a mainstay of DOA. His next game, therefore, was Ninja Gaiden for the Xbox in 2004. It was even called Ninja Gaiden in Japan and Europe, and I imagine that a lot of people had never even heard of the classic series. So as far as they were concerned, this was an action-adventure spin-off of DOA starring one of the ninjas, a true Ninja Gaiden. Since this started up a new line of sequels with the same numbers as older entries, I'll be referring to the newer ones by the final updated versions, since as you all know from the episode on game remakes, which you did watch, I know you did, those are the canonical versions. In this case, it's Ninja Gaiden Sigma. There was Ninja Gaiden Black in between, but that's not important. What is important though is that INA from DOA makes a cameo here. Her bio in this game states she is 14 years old. In DOA 1 through X, her age is listed as 16, placing this game two years prior to DOA. Yes, all four DOAs are set in the same year because Itagaki has no concept of the passage of time. Also, Sigma was apparently supposed to be a prequel to Classic Gaiden, not a reboot, so this falls before NG1 but after Shadow, which again is three years prior to the NES trilogy. The fact that Ninja Gaiden X, a mobile prequel to the original game that leads directly into its events, released the same year also supports that this reboot is a prequel. They remade DOA 2 as DOA Ultimate, with Ryu now in his new Ninja Gaiden outfit, which the fucker refuses to stop wearing. Now that Itagaki was a dedicated Xbox fanboy, the only one to ever exist in Japan, Dead or Alive 4 was a launch title for the Xbox 360 in December 2005. The ninjas finally make their move against Doatek for all the evils they've committed against them. Doatek stands for Dead or Alive Tournament Executive Committee, suggesting it exists purely to host a tournament, but it's not just a subsidiary of a larger company. This is the entire company, which had the name for years before it ever hosted a Dead or Alive tournament. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. Decent endings though, on the end. After this, Team Ninja began work on four different 360 exclusives, only two of which would see the light of day. 2006's Dead or Alive Extreme 2 pioneered individual breast physics and it was terrible. I'm fairly sure no game before or since had this feature, so Zack uses alien technology to raise the island and trick the girls again, but with personalised lies this time. He told me still falls for the tournament lie, though, the daft bint. The girls' ages are all still the same, meaning that all six DOAs up to this point are set within a year. And no one finds it suspicious that one company hosts four World Martial Arts tournaments in one year? Dumb. But Kokoro from 4 appears in this one with references to her story from 4, so it's clearly set afterwards. The island goes down and Zack is saved by his alien chumps. People who complain about this series' fan service. They need to get their fucking lives in order. In March 2008, Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword released on the Nintendo DS, and I loved it when DS games did that thing with the DS subtitle. Way more creative than just slapping a 64 or 3D on the end. 
Supposedly he only made it because his daughter asked him to, which he wouldn't have done otherwise because he was a dedicated ex-boy. The game is set 6 months after Sigma 1, forcing all of Classic Gaiden not set before NG1 into a period of about 18 months. All that was the case until the second of the four projects, Ninja Gaiden 2, released in June with its own Sigma version a year later. Sigma 2 adds three new chapters focused on the Ninja Gaiden ladies fighting a selection of bosses and their own little adventures. Sigma 2 is set a year after Sigma 1, forcing the aforementioned cramped games into a 12 month period. We know it's set before NG1 because Ryu's father Joe is still alive. The Sigma release also had a prequel comic with pre-orders and on the disc of perusal during installation, Ninja Gaiden the Vampire War. This comic is set shortly before Sigma 2. The other games planned for release were Code Cronus, an action adventure spin-off focused on Kasumi and Ayane in their youth, and an unrelated project called Project Progressive, presumably an SJW simulator. These games were cancelled when Itagaki left the company in 2008. Supposedly it was over a sexual harassment case and I won't say that he did or did didn't do it, but unfortunately as the creator of DOA Extreme, he's the kind of guy where you hear this and think, yeah that sounds about right. So out with Itagaki and in with Yosuke Hayashi as head of Team Ninja. In 2009, Tecmo merged with Koei to form Koei Tecmo. This event led to a ton of small crossovers between their properties like Samurai Warriors E. Naotora being added to DOA 5, and Ninja Gaiden characters appearing in various Warriors titles. The first DOA release after the merger was Dead or Alive Paradise, which is a PSP port of Extreme 2. I only mention it because I'm sure people will bring it up if I don't. Hayashi's first project after the Sigma 2 release was Dead or Alive Dimensions, a 3DS launch title that retells the events of DOA 1-4 in greater detail. I say greater detail, but it mainly just narrows the focus to the central plot, relegating most of the cast to cameos and fucking up a bunch of plot points like INA's foster father just being evil now and having her be brainwashed by him and later needing help from Hayate and Yu to defeat him, completely destroying the emotional crux of DOA 3's plot, but they kept INA's ending despite it not working at all now and Yu has to be involved in the defeat of every final boss because god forbid anyone other than Yu gets to be useful at all! So yeah, not a fan. Sadly, it's the canonical version of events now, but I'll still refer to the adapted games individually. But that's not the biggest issue here. You see, Dimensions also brought over Agent Sonya, the female lead of Sigma 2. I had to meet Irene. She's a CIA agent. What? This... this changes everything. All of a sudden, a question is raised over the canonical status of Classic Gaiden in its entirety, because this means Ryu meets Irene for the first time twice. And their relationship here is just generic anime crap where he's oblivious to the full harem of attractive ladies who want to unsheath the dragon sword, if you get my meaning, instead of her being his wife. This decision makes Ryu way less interesting and raises all kinds of questions about the canon. Dimensions also doesn't acknowledge either DOAX games, so who even knows if those are still canon? 2012 saw the continuations of both series, with Dead or Alive 5 and Ninja Gaiden 3 later reworked into Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge because the original release was fucking abysmal. In this game, all English people are evil, no one knows the address of the Prime Minister's home, a Japanese ninja is hired by the Japanese military to deal with English terrorists in England, and they introduce a thoroughly awesome new character to ship with view instead of having her be Irene because fuck married couples, am I right? So yeah, not a fan. Its placement is unclear for now. Dead or Alive 5 did something intelligent right off the bat, though it was likely for marketing reasons more than anything. The story moves forward two years. It's ludicrous that six DOA games are set in a single year, also impossible since no one ages during that time. It was more likely because Dimensions wasn't allowed to release in some countries because some of the girls were under 18. Now though, everyone is at least 18, even the jailbait Lolita and Honkers the Schoolgirl who are now two of the series' most popular characters because Japan has bred a generation of sex styles otaku who want to put their wieners in such characters. But no, they're totally 18 so it's all legal. Fuck those two. Only don't because that would be creepy and weird. But what order do these two games take place in? Well, in 2013, Ryu and INA were featured in Warriors Odyssey 3. Yes, I know, it's not canon, but hear me out here. Odyssey 3 received its own re-releases, each adding another DOA or Ninja Gaiden character, culminating in Warriors Odyssey 3 Ultimate, which features Ryu, INA, Rachel, Momiji and Kasumi. Each character had a bio on the official sites, making reference to what they were up to or when they're from. Ryu is from before Razor's Edge, INA is from after DOA 4, and Kasumi is pursuing her evil clone from the end of DOA 4. The idea of characters from one setting being taken from multiple points in time is never suggested, meaning all five characters are most likely from the same time, after DOA 4, but before Razor's Edge. So that's the order we're using, DOA 4, X2, Razor's Edge, DOA 5. But then, Joe Hayabusa also shows up in Razor's Edge, meaning he didn't die in NG1. So the classic games must be non-canon, right? Maybe we now have two universes, Classic Gaiden and DOA 1 through X2, and Reboot Gaiden and DOA D and 5. This whole thing is a complete mess. 
In 2014, Team Ninja teamed up with Comcept, the team behind Mighty No. 9, to produce Yaiba, Ninja Gaiden Z. The game follows Yaiba Kamikaze, a random enemy ninja who you cuts down no problem before getting rebuilt as a cyborg and seeking revenge. That is a fantastic game concept. The game itself... Eh, it's it's alright. The enemies are Zambambos and there's widespread devastation, so it seems like it would go at the very end of the timeline, even after more recent entries since no one ever talks about it, in universe or in real life. Alongside Yaiba, Dark Horse put out a three-part prequel comic delving into Yaiba's backstory. Yaiba tells the story to Miss Monday, who he first meets in the game, so it seems to be set during the game itself, possibly in between missions. I'll place it just before the game on our timeline, since the focus is on flashbacks with no clear time frame. Yaiba added a new twist on things. There is a file on Ryu Hayabusa in-game that lists his past exploits. It references, out of order so we can't use it to confirm game order, Sigma 1, Dragon Sword, Razor's Edge, NG2, NG3, and the arcade game confirming that yes, the hero of that game is Ryu. No mention is made of the slaying of the Tengu or the assault on Duotech, but this file confirms that classic guidance still happened. So what's the deal? One possibility is that Yaiba is just a non-canon spin-off, so it doesn't matter either way what it says, but Team Ninja was heavily involved here. Why would they have the file on the series protagonist acknowledge non-canon material, especially the really obscure arcade game that no one even remembers anymore? The other option, and more likely in my eyes, is that Sigma is currently considered a soft reboot, keeping the broad events of Classic Gaiden but changing details to better fit with the current vision. These details are, Joe Hayabusa was not killed in the first game, merely blinded, forcing him to step down as leader of the clan. Ryu and Irene never entered into a relationship, married or opened their shop. They already knew each other by NG1, but their relationship had barely changed since Sigma 2. Irene was always a busty blonde instead of a demure brunette. She was not a useless waste of space in the OVA, nor did Ryu need to sacrifice the Dragon Sword to save her life in NG2. The clan was not wiped out in the Master System title, simply attacked, as commonly happens. And Ryu has only briefly worn different clothing twice across 10 stories, possibly more than 10. So if we go with this idea, it kind of does work. We can reasonably fit all Ninja Gaiden, classic and modern, into a single timeline. You just need to jump through a few hoops to make it work. In September 2014, October 2015 for the rest of the world because KT Japan fucking hates us, Zero slash Project Zero slash Fatal Frame 5 was released with a bonus chapter following INA which was supposedly included at Nintendo's request. Now aside from using the same environment and enemy types, INA's chapter is completely standalone from the rest of the game. No characters show up, the events are never alluded to and the camera obscura doesn't feature. Because it's all so completely removed and detached, it's entirely possible that this chapter is canon to DOA and is set around the DOA slash NG versus version of Mount Hikami. As such, I'm counting it as canon and I'll set it as it was released in between DOA 5 and Dead or Alive Extreme 3, which was released earlier this year exclusively in Asia because the devs were worried SJWs would complain about the game because of course they fucking would. The devs had fans vote for which characters would make the game's roster, leading to the exclusion of Tina, Leifang, and Christy, while Jailbait and Honkers won by a landslide and are the game's cover girls. For fuck's sake, Japan, have some self respect. Luckily, the game is set on New Zack Island again, indicating that the other DOAXs are still canon. It features newcomers from 5's expansion, so it goes on the end. Kinda. And now we're done. The Dead or Alive slash Ninja Gaiden timeline is finally complete, so let's talk time frame. INA is 14 in Sigma 1 and 16 in DOA 1, placing them two years apart. Ryu is 23 in DOA, making him 21 in Sigma. Dragon Sword comes six months after Sigma, and Sigma 2 is a year after 1, with the Vampire War happening around the same time, making Ryu 22. Gaiden 1 is set between Sigma 2 and DOA 1, with Gaiden 2 coming a year after. Therefore, everything between Sigma 2 and Gaiden 2 is set when Ryu is 22, while Gaiden 2 through DOA X2 have him at 23. Shadow is set 3 years prior to Gaiden 1, making Ryu 19. Dead or Alive 5 ages up the cast by 2 years, making Ryu 25. DOA X3 uses the same ages as DOA 5, keeping it and Fatal Frame 5 in the same year. Razor's Edge is set during that two year gap, so we may as well place Ryu at 24. Ninja Gaiden Arcade is set in 1999, but its placement compared to everything else is unknown. The Ninja Gaiden Wiki claims Shadow is a year later with no source, but I've really got nothing else to go on, and Ryu's first adventure in America being set when he's 18 seems strangely fitting, so let's go with that. This sets Shadow in 2000, Sigma and Dragon Sword in 2002, Vampire War to Gaiden 3 in 2003, Gaiden 2 to DOA X2 in 2004, Razor's Edge in 2005, DOA 5 to X3 in 2006, and Yaiba sometime later. 
But technology has clearly pressed on much further than even the real world with mobile phones appearing in some games, as well as flying cars being common in Tokyo and Sigma 2 which we estimate is 2003, so it's possible a sliding timescale is in effect here which I've covered in the past. If this is the case then our best bet would be to bring the most recent game into 2016 which would be DOA X3. If we do this we add 10 years to each date. So with this, Ryu is born in 1991, Classic Garden's most active year fittingly enough, and his first adventure was in 2009 when Koei Tecmo was formed. And now that we have an understanding, we're ready for the conclusion. I honestly thought this was going to be a lot harder to work out because of how horrendously unclear it is whether or not Classic Gaiden is canon anymore, but I think the idea of accepting the contradictory Tomb Raider novel last time really helped put things into perspective in this one. Thanks, Lara. So without further ado, the Dead or Alive and Ninja Gaiden shared universe timeline goes a little something like this. 15th of June, 1991. Ryu Hayabusa is born to Hayabusa clan head Joe Hayabusa. 3rd of July, 1991. Hayate is born to Mugen Tenshin clan head Shiden and his wife Ayame. 30th of January, 1993. Eleanor Douglas is born to Doatek president Fame Douglas and his mistress Maria. 23rd of February, 1997. Kasumi is born to Shiden and Ayame. 5th of August, 1998. Ayane is born as a result of Shiden's brother Raido raping Ayame. 2009. Ryu and a fellow Hayabusa clan member battle their way across America to defeat the Nostradamus cult and prevent the Nostradamus prophecy from coming true. 2010. Ryu travels to New York to save it from Emperor Garuda, a servant of the Jackio. 2012. The Hayabusa village is attacked by Doku of the Holy Vigor Empire to obtain the Dark Dragon Blade. Ryu pursues him to Vigor where he slays Doku and his cohort, as well as their master, the Holy Vigor Emperor. Ryu's uncle Murai then steals the blade, only to be cut down by Ryu who destroys the Dark Dragon Blade for good. Six months later, the Black Spider Clan abducts the Hayabusa Shrine Maiden, Momiji, to obtain the Eye of the Dragon for a pair of fiends attempting to revive the Vigor Emperor. With help from Momiji, Ryu is able to slay the fiends before they can complete the resurrection. 2013 The ancient war between the Vampire Fiends and the Dragon Lineage comes to an end with the Vampire Lord Crimson's death at the hands of Joe and Ryu. Shortly thereafter, Ryu meets CIA agent Irene Liu, who recruits him to stop the Black Spider Clan, who are allied with a group of fiends attempting to resurrect the Arch Fiend. After the Black Spiders attack the Hayabusa village, Ryu kills their leader, Genshin. The ritual succeeds and Ryu is forced to kill the Arch Fiend in battle. Ryu is later called upon to complete his training with his father. Joe then departs to accept a duel with Bloody Mouth in which he is seemingly killed. Ryu is contacted by Irene during his quest for revenge as their goals are aligned. Ryu kills Mouth, then learns that his father is alive but possessed. Ryu releases Joe from his possession, angering the Jackio. Joe takes the Jackio's attack for Ryu, rendering him permanently blind. Ryu kills both the Jackio and the demon Jashin, whom the former was attempting to revive. Unable to leave the clan in his blinded state, Joe passes leadership on to Ryu. Mercenaries hired by the demon Shiragane attack the Hayabusa village to steal the Dragon Sword so the demon can amplify his powers and start World War III. The attackers are repelled and Ryu tracks down their demonic employer, slaying him. A doppelganger of Ryu attacks Irene, framing Ryu for her supposed death. Ryu discovers that Irene survived her encounter with his double and that the Castle Rock Fortress is actually an interdimensional airship. Ryu kills the doppelganger and the true mastermind, Clancy. 2014. Irene is abducted by the sorcerer Ashtar. Ryu pursues and kills Ashtar but learns that the Jackio has been revived. Ryu kills Jackio for the final time and saves Irene. The Hayabusa village is attacked by the Dark Samurai to obtain the sacred scroll of Bushido. Ryu hunts him down and destroys him. Ryu comes into conflict with a scientist creating demons. He learns that the scientist is being manipulated by Professor Bucky Wise who transforms into a demon himself. Ryu kills him and ends the threat. Rido attacks the Mugen Tenshin village to steal their secret Nimpo, the Torn Skyblast. He uses the art to cripple Hayate before fleeing. Kasumi pursues Rido to avenge her brother at becoming branded a traitor. Ayane is dispatched to hunt Kasumi and kill her. Doatek hosts the first Dead or Alive tournament around this time. Kasumi slays Rido in the final round but is soon captured by Doatek forces. Fame Douglas is then assassinated by Victor Donovan who attempts to seize the company. Kasumi's DNA is used to create clones in Project Alpha, producing only one successful clone. Doatek abducts Hayate for use in Project Epsilon. Hayate's spine is restored but the brainwashing fails, leaving him amnesiac. Ryu helps Kasumi escape the facility in time for the announcement of the second Dead or Alive tournament. At the second tournament, Hayate's memory is restored and Ryu slays Bankotsubo, a Tengu allied with Doatek. Genra of the Mugen Tenshin submits himself for experimentation by Doatek as Project Omega. He is killed in the third tournament by his foster daughter Ayane. 
Project Alpha moves into its final phase, transforming the only successful clone into Alpha 152. INA returns home for going the tournament's prize money, leaving it to runner-up Zack. He gambles his money in Las Vegas to build a fortune. He uses this money to buy an island and invite the tournament's female competitors for a two-week vacation. The island's volcano erupts, sinking the entire landmass. She then steps down as head of the Mook Intention, electing Hayate as the new head. Eleanor Douglas assumes control of her father's company and attempts to right the company's wrongs. Hayate declares war on Doha Tech, leading the Mugen Tension against the Doha Tech Tri Tower during the fourth Dead or Alive tournament with assistance from the Hayabusa clan. The Tri Tower is destroyed, but Alpha 152 escapes. Zack uses alien technology to raise Zack Island from the ocean depths and rechristen it New Zack Island. He once again brings the ladies of the tournament to the island for a vacation. The island is then destroyed by a meteor, from which Zack is saved by a UFO. 2015 Viewers is afflicted with the grip of murder curse by the Lords of Alchemy who are attempting to transform their leader's granddaughter into a goddess. Ryu joins forces with the Japanese self-defense force to eliminate the group. He does so and is cured of the curse by an unwilling member of the group. 2016 Doatech hosts the 5th Dead or Alive tournament which sees Jan Lee emerge as the winner. Ryu and the Mugen Tenshin attack Donovan's facility with Kasumi finally killing Alpha 152. INA travels to Mount Hikami to rescue a teenage girl who was spirited away after a failed suicide attempt. INA relates to the girl, allowing her to break through the hold the spirits have over her. Zack restores New Zack Island and a selection of the female DOA competitors arrive for another vacation. Kamikaze clan ninja Yaiba Kamikaze challenges Ryu to a duel and is cut down. He's restored as a cyborg and attempts to avenge his own death. His benefactor, Elrico Del Gonzo, unleashes a zombie plague across the earth. After another duel with Ryu who implores him to find the good in himself, Yaiba betrays El Gonzo and kills him. Ryu decides to keep an eye on the last of the kamikaze. The ultimate takeaway from all this is that these two series have had their ups and downs from the heights of Ninja Gaiden Sigma and DOA Ultimate to the lows of Ninja Gaiden 3 and the plot of Dimensions. And Yaiba may not have been all that great a game, but still, I think we can all agree that it's the best game Beck will ever appear in. Oh!